I'm gonna do something that I rarely do on this channel. Oh, but I'm actually getting tingles. Well, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Cocktails with Kira. My name is Kira, and I'm a whiskey loving Irish gal who's on a cocktail voyage of discovery. If you are new here, I have zero professional bar experience other than a passion for making mixed drinks at home and showing you how I do it. So hit that subscribe button, stick around, and we both just might learn something because if I can do it, you can do it. In today's video, we are going to be making a classic prohibition cocktail and another drink that I have never tried before. So today we are going to be making an Algonquin. So yes, the Algonquin is one of the classic cocktails that was created during the Prohibition era, and it is also known as a whiskey martini or a Manhattan style cocktail. So I'm very curious to try it because as I said, I have never made this before and I've never tasted this cocktail before, so I don't really know what to expect. So before we get into the history of an Algonquin cocktail and I show you how I make it at home for the first time, I would like to take a second to tell you about my Patreon. Not only is it a great way of supporting my channel, but you can also have access to exclusive content, you can join in on my monthly live stream with my Patreon community, and you can see the footage that is just too tipsy for YouTube. So let's get into the history of an Algonquin. So although the exact date of creation is unclear, it is said that the Algonquin cocktail was created sometime in the late 1920s, early 1930s. And it is of course named after the famous Algonquin Hotel in New York. So despite being a dry hotel during the Prohibition era, the Algonquin Hotel did create the Algonquin cocktail, but they were also famous for something known as the Algonquin Round Table. The Algonquin Round Table was essentially a meeting spot for a host of prolific writers, critics, and theater folk who used to meet up for lunch every single day for approximately 10 years. It was called the 10 year lunch and they were fueled by cocktails and witty conversation and banter. And the Algonquin round table itself was said to be a symbol of the decadence and sophistication of that 1920s golden era. So one can only assume that many Algonquin cocktails were drank around the round table. So now that I've given you a little bit of history on the Algonquin cocktail, let's get into its ingredients. So given that the Algonquin cocktail is referred to as the whiskey martini, as you can imagine, it is a whiskey based cocktail. So it typically uses rye whiskey. So I have a bottle of bullet rye here. If you watch this series, you will know I love this whiskey. It's great for so many cocktails. It's run down quite low, but fear not, I have another bottle waiting to be opened. So that's what we're gonna use today. So for our Algonquin, we are also going to be using some white vermouth. I have the Martini Bianco here, which is going to be perfect. We're also gonna be using some pineapple juice in this drink. and if you watched my latest video, which was a painkiller, I also used pineapple juice in that. So I'm curious to see how the pineapple juice will work in this cocktail. It's kind of a weird ingredient. And then finally, we are also gonna be using some Peychaud's bitters. Whenever I use these, it always reminds me of a Sazerac and I don't get to use them that often. So it's always great when I can include them. But if you don't have Peychaud's bitters, you can also just use orange bitters as well. And then for our garnish, we are also gonna be using my favorite, the Luxardo Maraschino cherries. Always delighted to include these. These are also running extremely low. I think there's only like one left in here. But of course I have a fresh jar waiting to be opened. I can't be without these. So I have to say, it feels like a rather odd assortment of ingredients. I can't really visualize how this is all going to work together. I'm obviously going with an open mind. I have read that this is a very well balanced, delicious cocktail. So let's see. So now that we have all of our ingredients ready, let's go ahead and make an Algonquin. All right, so let's start off by adding some ice into our mixing glass. And I also have some ice chilling in my little coupe glass, so it's going to be nicely chilled because this is a cocktail that is served straight up. So we wanna make sure the glass is as cold as possible beforehand. So let's start off by adding our rye whiskey. We're gonna do 45 mils of our bullet. If you wanna do 60, I won't blame you, but I'm gonna do 45. Then we're gonna do 22.5 mils of our vermouth. There we go in on top. Then we're gonna do the same amount again of our pineapple juice, so another 22 and a half mils in on top. And then our final ingredient is the Peychaud's bitters, and apparently we are just doing one dash, so I'm gonna try and do one healthy dash and not make a mess. All right, interesting color so far. Okay, so now we have all of our ingredients. We're gonna go ahead and give it a nice stir. 
And by doing this, we really, really want to cool the drink down nicely because we're not going to be serving it over ice. At least I don't think so anyway. So we'll stir it for about 30 seconds. And you can see the ice hasn't diluted too much. So I'm just going to go and chuck out my ice and my glass is nicely chilled. And now it's time to strain it in. This is a very quick cocktail. So we've got our chilled coupe glass ready. So let's strain this in and see how she looks. Oh, bit of ice went in there. We'll leave that be. There we go. Okay, gorgeous color so far. That looks really, really pretty. Got a teensy bit of ice, but I'm just gonna leave it in there. Now for the Algonquin, you can shake this cocktail if you like. I know some people do shake it. However, when you add pineapple juice and then you shake it, you can kind of be left with a little bit of a frothy head situation. So if you don't mind that, you can go ahead and shake, but I would just rather stir. So that is almost completely done. We're just gonna do the garnish. So I'm probably gonna use, I think this is my last singular Luxardo cherry. So let me fish this bad boy out. And I feel like it's just a single cherry garnish, even though I would be tempted to pile up about six or seven on them. I tend to go big or go home with these cherries. I'm just gonna let some of the excess drip off and also have some syrup while I'm here. Oh my goodness. It is the best flavor. Gently rest it. Oh, beautiful. I have to say it looks very chic. All right, so there we have it. Our Algonquin cocktail is done. She looks beautiful, very minimal. We've got a nice little summery color palette going on here. It smells really good, but as I said, I have not tasted this cocktail before. It is my first time making it. I'm very curious to see how this tastes. So if you will join me over on my cocktail drinking chair, let's try an Algonquin for the first time and see how she tastes. <music> Okay, so I'm back in my cocktail drinking chair. I have my Algonquin here. It's still really, really nicely chilled. So let's try her and see how she tastes. Cheers. Oh, hmm. I'm gonna do something that I rarely do on this channel and say that I'm not a fan of this cocktail. I often get people saying that I like absolutely everything that I make and that there isn't a drink in existence, well, an alcoholic one, that I don't enjoy. There's definitely been one or two cocktails on the series that I haven't enjoyed. Actually, the eggnog comes to mind. Um, but yeah, I have to say this isn't my favorite. I feel like it is the mix of ingredients that takes away from what I love about the rye whiskey. Vermouth is fine. I think it's really, really nice in cocktails and pineapple juice can be amazing in drinks. I just had it in a painkiller and absolutely loved it. It's hard to put my finger exactly on what it is that I don't like about it. I think it is just the general mix of ingredients. I have heard that this drink is, is well balanced and delicious, so potentially I may have made it wrong. That's always a possibility. I can't say that I hate it. Like I, I could definitely drink it. I mean, I can drink battery acid apparently and be absolutely fine, but um, I definitely wouldn't order it and it wouldn't be my preference, but I could definitely, you know, finish it if it was given to me or if somebody made it for me. Now, I do feel like me not enjoying this drink could have been how I prepared it. Maybe if I did a shaken cocktail, if I included some different ingredients, possibly that could be part of it. So I'm definitely open to critiques. If there's something I could do better, let me know. I would definitely be up for trying this cocktail again, but as it stands, I'm not a huge fan. It is now that time in the video that I get to sit back, enjoy my cocktail and answer some questions from my Patreon community. So I have a question here from the lovely Sam Colt who always asks great questions and Sam asks, what would be your dream vacation? Well, Sam, I've tried to not think about that too much because right now international travel is just not something that we can really do in Ireland. It wasn't something we could do last year either, but my dream vacation, and it's been this way for a while, is to go to Japan particularly for the cherry blossom season, if possible, uh, where they have all the beautiful sakura trees and they are in bloom and oh, it just looks so beautiful. One big one being ramen. It's my favorite meal ever. I absolutely love it. If you follow me over on Instagram, you'll see I make it at least like once or twice a week. Um, so obviously going to Japan would be amazing. I would eat my way around all of the amazing ramen restaurants and bars and stuff like that. The other thing I would love to try is Wagyu beef. I've never tried that before. I know it's like a speciality in Japan. I, 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 I'm a big meat eater. Like I love a really, really nice steak. Oh, it's like my favorite thing ever. So to have Wagyu beef in Japan would be so like, so incredible. 
oh, oh my God, the thoughts of it, I'm actually getting tingles. <laughs> and then the final thing that I would love to go to Japan for is the whiskey. One of my favorite whiskeys, I mean, it's probably up there in top three, is the Nika from The Barrel. It's a Japanese whiskey brand. It is absolutely delicious. I actually really need to make it in a cocktail for the channel, that needs to happen but it's beautiful. And I know that uh, Japan has a really big whiskey industry. They have some really amazing uh, brands and I'd love to go and just try them all. Eat all the ramen, have all the Wagyu, drink all the whiskey. Honestly, sounds iconic. Who wants to come with me? So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching me make and try an Algonquin cocktail for the first time. If you were hoping that I was going to be blown away, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I would also love to know if you enjoy an Algonquin, if you make it at home, let me know if I could do something better. Did I follow the recipe? properly? Is there a way that I can improve this drink? Maybe it's just not to my taste. I would love to know what you think in the comments. If you liked this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more easy cocktail recipes that you can make at home, I will leave a link up here. And if you have not already, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every single week and I would love to have you back for more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next one. Cheers.